Okay, we're still going with polynomial equations now, um, and this is solving. And, and solving equations, finding the solutions, again, is the same as finding the zeros or the roots. Um, so, but because it's an equation and it's not a function, it's not f of x equals, there could be variables on either side. So the first step, just like it always has been when we're solving, is get everything on one side. So I'm going to first subtract 3x here and make sure you put it in the right spot. This 2x to the third is first, minus 5x squared, minus 3x. They're not going to combine because there's no like terms. And now I'm going to go to factor this. So I can factor out an x. I have 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. And I check to factor that polynomial. Go ahead and see if you can factor that polynomial. Pause it for a second. Okay, and it does factor. And it factors into 2x plus 1 times x minus 3. And so then I have x is equal to 0, 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, and x minus 3 is equal to 0. So I have x is equal to 0, negative 1 half, and positive 3. And all of these solutions are real solutions. But at this point, we're finding all real solutions and imaginary solutions. Um, so for this next one, same thing. I got to get everything on one side. So I'm going to subtract three or subtract six x cubed from both sides. And where that's going to go, I have three x to the fourth minus six x cubed, and then plus twelve x squared. That six x cubed goes on the in the middle because that's where it is in standard form. Factor out my GCF, which in this case is not just x squared, but 3x squared. And I'm left with x squared minus 6x plus, I'm sorry, x squared minus 2x plus 4. And when I try to go to factor this, because it's a 1, I can use that easy method what multiplies to be positive 4 that adds to be negative 2. But when I'm looking at 4 and 1 or 2 and 2, neither one of them fit that scenario. So this quadratic cannot be factored. Well, how else can I find the solutions to that quadratic? And what you're going to do is you're going to use the quadratic formula. So if it can't be factored, then you go to the quadratic formula. So I have x equals negative b. Well, that's going to become positive 2 because my b is negative 2. So positive 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared. Well, negative 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times 1 times 4 all over 2 times 1. So I have 2 plus or minus the square root of 4. This is going to stay a minus 16 all over 2. 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 all over 2. And that negative 12 can simplify into 2i times the square root of 3. And now when I'm looking to simplify so that's going to simplify into x equals 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 3. So what that means is my solutions, I'm going to come up 
here to write it. My solutions are x equals 1 plus or minus square root of, I'm sorry, i times the square root of 3. But also, because of this x squared that I factored out first, don't forget 0 as a solution as well. Okay? On to the next one. If you notice, this is already in factored form. So what I can do is set them each equal to 0 and solve. And because... I don't have a b term, and it's just x squared and a constant. I can solve by taking square roots. So I'm going to add one to both sides. Just remember, when I take the square root of both sides, you have to remember to have the plus or minus, and the square root of 1 is 1. So then when I do it over here, subtract 4, x squared is equal to negative 4. I take the square root of both sides. Well, the square root of negative 4 is not negative 2. Don't forget the plus or minus, but it is 2i. So my solutions here are x is equal to plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2i. Okay, so now we're going to go over a couple special patterns. And the first one is going to be a special quartic. Um, because it's quartic, it's going to be x to the fourth and what's going to make it a special quartic is it's just going to have an x to the fourth then the x squared term and then the constant now you could have coefficients here with these okay um, but whenever it's in this form you can factor it the same way you would factor a quadratic so if, it, if there's a 1 in the A spot, you could use the easy one. But if it's an A, you could use AC method or the T-chart or whatever you use. The only difference is you're going to have an X squared here and an X squared here instead of just X and X. Okay, so for this first one, when I put it in standard form, I have X to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. And because this is a 1, I'm just looking at what multiplies to be 4 or negative 4. That adds to be negative 3. And that's going to be negative 4 and positive 1. So when I put that in here, because it's that special quartic, it's going to be x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 4. And that's this quartic factor. So start to notice that makes it a lot easier. And now I can go ahead and solve x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. And now I can solve by square roots. So take the square root of both sides, don't forget, plus or minus. And when I do this one, because it's a negative 1, I get plus or minus i. So I have x equals plus or minus i plus or minus 2. Notice when it's x to the fourth minus or 36, something like this. This really is a difference of squares. Um, so you can have x squared minus 6 times x squared minus plus 6, sorry. x squared minus 6 times x squared plus 6. So then when I would solve it, the only difference is it's not going to be a perfect square when you take the square root. So just leave it in the radical. Plus or minus square root of 6 and that doesn't simplify. When I do this one though and I subtract 6 from both sides and take the square root I get 
the square root of negative 6, which becomes plus or minus i times the square root of 6. Okay, get out your factoring foldable, and this is going to be on the last tab down here. Okay, and it's going to be split into two, so I'm going to make the page your tab there. So you can split it into two, and down here is where your tab should be, so that should show the sum of cubes and difference of cubes, which we're going to abbreviate SOC and DOC. And I'm going to give you the rules for it first, and then we're going to do a couple examples on each. Okay, I'll give you a second to copy the rules down for each. Understand, this is when you have two cubes being added. This one's when you have two cubes being subtracted. Hence, the sum of cubes and difference of cubes. So with the sum of cubes, I'm going to show you just first how to factor it, and then we'll do one with, when we're solving it. So you have two perfect cubes here, x cubed and 8. Um, and what you're going to do is find what a and b is. a is going to be the cube root of that first term, which is just going to be x. b is going to be the cube root of the second term, which the cube root of 8 is 2. And from there, to factor it, you're going to plug the a and b into that formula. So I have x plus 2 times x squared minus 2 times x, x times 2, we're going to write it 2 times x, plus b squared, well my b is 2, so 2 squared is 4. So then on the next one, and understand this is the factored form of what we started with, x cubed plus 8. So all I'm looking for is factoring right now. I'm going to try to factor this, and I need to find my a, which is the cube root of 8x cubed. Well, the cube root of 8 is 2 and the cube root of x cubed is x, so it's 2x. b, my cube root of 1 is 1. I'm not, ref I'm not concerned about that negative there because the negatives are already in the formula. They're already considered in the formula. So when I have my a minus b, that's going to be 2x minus 1. a squared, well, when you square this, it's not just going to be 2x squared. You have to square the 2 as well, so it's going to be 4x squared, plus a times b, 2x times 1 is 2x, plus b squared is 1. So this is the factored form of that polynomial. So you can go back to your notes, and we're going to solve this cubic equation now. Again, first I got to get everything on one side. So I have 8x cubed minus 125 is equal to 0. So I'm going to have to factor that first. And to factor it, I'm going to use the difference of cubes because these two are perfect cubes and they're being subtracted here. So my difference of cubes formula I have here in the foldable, you have it in the foldable, and I need to find the a and the b. Well the a is going to be the cube root of 8x cubed, which is 2x. Include the x with that a. The b is going to be the cube root of 125, which is 5. And again, I'm not using the negative there, because all I'm doing now is plugging in this formula. So I have a minus b, a squared, remember square the 2 as well, 4x squared, plus 2x times 5 plus b squared. So I have 2x minus 5 times 4x squared, this becomes 10x, this becomes 25. And I'm going to go to solve now. So to solve the first one, it's easy. 2x minus 5 is equal to 0. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. 
So I get x is equal to 5 over 2. To solve the quadratic part, it's not going to be able to be factored. You're going to have to use the quadratic formula. So I have x equals negative 10 plus or minus 10 squared minus 4 times 4 times 25 all over 2 times 4. So negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 100 minus 400 all over 8. Negative 10 plus or minus the square root of negative 300 all over 8. And the square root of negative 300 can simplify. If you do the birthday cake factor tree, you're going to get 10i times the square root of 3. The i is there because it's a negative. And it's always going to be an imaginary when you're using this formula to factor it. So that now can simplify by 2. So I get negative 5 plus or minus 5i times the square root of 3 all over 4 along with that 5 over 2 that I got from here. And those are my solutions. I know this one went a little longer. Thank you for sticking through it and going through the whole thing. Joke time. What does a roller coaster say when you like it, when you ask if he likes his job? It has its ups and downs.